going on YouTube welcome to the Jim of all trades channel glad you made it by my name is Jim I'm a crypto trader and a forex trader here to help you understand the market from an Elliott Wave perspective what's going on guys how's it going today is Monday 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 it's market maker Monday I'm starting a new series of videos every week hoping to bring a video every day of the week um, uh, with a little bit of a twist in the names of the weeks so, uh, today's gonna be market maker Monday uh, today we're going to look at uh, market maker tactics. I'm going to start teaching you how the market makers uh, are at least part of why the market moves the way it moves. We'll explain what market makers are along the way and I'll show you some of their tactics. Tomorrow, just to give you a heads up for tomorrow, it's going to be traditional Tuesday. What do I mean by that? We're going to look at the S&P and the NASDAQ. We're going to look at the charts and see where they might be going. Also going to look at stocks, any stock that you want to look at. So if you're watching this video, why don't you put in our comments uh, what stocks you'd like me to check out for tomorrow's video. So traditional Tuesday is coming up. And Wednesday is going to be Wisdom Wednesday. Wisdom Wednesday is just going to be about trading wisdom and trading science psychology just really teaching people really the most important things about being a trader and trading assets and it may you may find it's going to help you more than anything else on the market in as far as youtube videos is concerned concerning trading uh then we're going to jump into theory thursday theory thursday is going to be looking into elliott wave theory and i'm just going to begin showing you just one little aspect of elliott wave theory every thursday and you begin to build your knowledge about elliott wave theory and then friday we're going to be have forex friday those of you trading the Forex, you know, you're looking at the Aussie dollar maybe or the uh, EURUSD or uh, uh, UJ or uh, or CAD, uh, UCAD, whatever you're looking at, we'll look at uh, what you'd like. So also in the comments of this, if you want to see a particular pair covered um, and uh, on Friday for the Forex, if you guys are trading the Forex, let me know. I'll do the analysis on Friday. So that's what, that's what the week's going to look like. Hope you like the uh, change to the channel. Really working hard to get the content out to you guys. Just an overall trading education and, and just, to, just to expand and develop the, the channel beyond crypto um, to overall trading because I do trade uh, and, and, and interested in all of these things. So with that said, let's jump into the video. Don't forget, I'm not a financial advisor, guys. I'm just a trader sharing my knowledge with you guys. With that said, you won't find the moon boy here. You won't find a bear boy here. You'll find a guy who stays about as even keel as they come. I don't have any uh, horses in this race, guys. And I'm just going to look and tell you honestly what I think the market's doing. No hype here. So with that said, if that's what you value, hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Let your friends and family know that you like this channel. Let, let YouTube know that you like the channel so they can keep recommending to others just like you. All right, let's jump in. Um, all right, so market maker, market maker uh, Monday. What's what's this all about? What am I what am I saying? Well, there's an entity called market makers. Market makers are basically uh, large institutions, mainly banks, that are uh, con that that are conscripted to provide market making services to exchanges. What's a market making service? Basically, it's a it's a contract to buy or sell and take any trade at any time from any trader. So an exchange needs to be able to provide liquidity. Liquidity is movement of the money. All right. And so basically, if you want to sell your Bitcoin, you need to find a willing buyer. Right. And so a market making entity will willingly buy any Bitcoin you want to sell them at any time, whether it's beneficial to them at the moment or not. OK. Uh, and uh, Likewise, a market making entity will sell their Bitcoin to you if you want to buy Bitcoin and they'll buy it. You can buy Bitcoin from a market making um, market maker uh, at any time, whether it's beneficial for them to sell their Bitcoin to you. So in other words, they, they are providing the liquidity in the market. That means they have a very, very, very um, high stake in where price goes. Because what happens basically, if if there's a bunch of traders tr selling Bitcoin up here, that means a market maker is buying Bitcoin up here. That's not good. That's not good at all for them because they're, if they're buying Bitcoin, they're buying the top. And if, and if and there's selling pressure going down, prices going down, that means their books are going to turn upside down. They can't have that, can they? That's why price doesn't go in a straight line very long, does it? Okay. 
So it always, the market always comes back. You say, why does the market always come back? Because it behooves the market maker to drive price back to where they were, back to where they were buying Bitcoin so they can sell it, okay? So they drive price back up so they can get everybody get you buying again because they oh no I should have shouldn't have sold I should buy here because it's going up again right and they might even come up and tag this high and sell into everybody buying the FOMO okay and that that and that's how they that's that's how they keep their books okay so so they'll come back to big moves that's why that's why when you see a big move like this you'll notice that over time all of that price gets taken back okay all of it does i mean and you you can see that uh, for instance like right here on this big move up you have this sideways action they came all the way back down spent a lot of time in here before they pushed price up okay so anyway the market makers have to keep their books solvent they can't get they can't get uh um, two upside down in any one position there because they're taking uh, longs and shorts at any given time. So uh, the, the price then will move based upon where their books are. They will move price uh, where they think it's best for them. Now, market makers do not like the big moves in general. Okay, The big, the big whales uh, prefer the bigger moves, right? However, uh, the market making firms uh, like price when it's staying in a range, okay? because that's when they can really, really do their business and they can make money on the spread. So let's focus in on range trading just a little bit today as we talk about market making a little bit. And, and I'll just show you this 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 thing that a good friend of mine, uh, Kimo Sabi in our group shared. And so this is, we draw boxes of liquidity. Whenever you see price going in a sideways uh, range, just draw, draw a box around it like this, around the highs and the lows. Okay, uh, where you get the most touches, right? And so there's a little liquidity box right here. Okay, um, yeah, it, j it just depends on. You could draw it down here. You could you could actually draw it on this low here because you got some touches. If you drew it, you got touches over here. So just it, you'll see that there's a a, pl a range in which most price is 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 staying in for a while. You you had a liquidity box right here as well there's this is liquidity zone right here okay it's a large one okay and on every time frame you'll find liquidity boxes you'll find uh we act in fact we go down to the 15 minute chart and what what do you see you see a liquidity zone developing right here okay what these liquidity zones do they're 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 they always happen at levels where traders take positions both directions, okay? It, it's based on a trader's psychology. These are liquidity zones because they're areas in which traders are going to make decisions about letting go of their money. That's what liquidity is. It's money in motion. It's movement of money, like like liquid. It's, it's flowing money, okay? So how, how is a market maker or any entity, uh, let's just talk about you, how are you going to let go of your money by buying Bitcoin or selling Bitcoin? What's it going to take to see on the chart for you to sell your Bitcoin? What are you going to have to see? What What is going to uh, preempt you as you watch the chart to say, oh, I need to sell my Bitcoin? Or the other way around, what's going to cause you to say, oh, I need to buy Bitcoin right now? What's going to cause your psychology to make that kind of decision, to push the button on the exchange that says buy or sell? Okay, that's, that's what we call creating liquidity. When you see something on the chart that causes you to say, ooh, I want to buy it or I want to sell it, that's a liquidity, that, that's a liquidity, liquidity creating event, right? Generally speaking. Now, everybody's different depending on their strategies or the fact that they don't have any strategies. But you'll find that they'll become these zones where the price goes up and down, up and down, just 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 chopping within a zone, creating more and more liquidity. Now, why is this a, a good liquidity zone? Well, what's price been doing? Price has been going nothing but going, uh, but going up, 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 up. Even when it's going sideways, it's going up, up. So what's the psychology of the market right now? Well, everything's going up. It's bullish. Here we go, right? 
And so there's a group of people out there that are bull boys and they're looking at this thinking everything's going up. It's not going down. We're going up to 55K. Here we come. There's a group of people that think that way, right? And so they're looking, they're looking at price going sideways. They're looking at this. Oh, this is a pullback. Let's buy the pullback and here we go, right? That's, that's the mentality, okay? And so what you'll notice is that there's a liquidity zone developing here, right? Okay, where, where people are buying and traders are taking positions. There's another group of people out there that think, wait a minute, all we've been doing is going up and up and up and up. We need a correction. They understand that the market corrects. It doesn't just go in one direction forever, but it corrects and it corrects often very significantly. So they're the bear boys out there that are thinking, hey, this is a correction. We're going down, right? And so they're looking to short this market. So there's a bunch of people looking to take long positions and a bunch of people looking to take short positions. All right. And then everything in between and then people that are have bad timing in their trades and they get caught in this chop. And this is what we call liquidity zone. OK, <clears throat> how do you get caught in the chop? Well, for instance, let's just say price was going up and you're a bear boy and you start to see this big move to the downside. You're like, oh, it's going down really fast. And your emotion says, oh, it's going down. It's what I expected. I was looking for a short. I was looking for price to go down. And so you jump on the train somewhere in here, okay, looking for price to go down. And you forget, because you're emotionally driven in your, in, your, uh, in your trading, that the market doesn't go straight in one direction. It goes in waves. And so you jump in a short right here, right? So let's just say your position, you're late to the game, okay, and you get in a short somewhere in this zone right there. And the market will go up and it'll scare you. And some people will get out of their trade like, oh, I was wrong. And they'll get scared. Okay. And then it'll go back down. And they're like, oh, no, I was right. Here it goes. It's going down again. And they'll jump back into their shorts. And there are all kinds of traders out there that just react to the waves. And, and, and they give a lot of money back to the uh, liquidity providers because they are pushing price up and down, up and down, because they're giving you confirmation waves of your bias. You have a bias, you're looking for something, and they give you a wave that looks like it's doing what you're expecting it to do. And so you take that trade. You let go of your money, you take the trade. And then all of a sudden they push it against you, okay? Now there's, all, there's other people too that are saying, hey, I'm looking for this thing to go up, right? And so they see this three wave move right here and they're like, oh, here it goes up. And they jump in on this wave late because they, you know, they say, oh, finally, yeah, we got a big candle to the upside. Here we go, let's go, let's take this trade. So you got people taking longs and taking shorts at the same location right here in the middle of this chop. And what they'll do is they'll keep, they'll take price up, giving confirmation to the longs. They'll take price down, giving confirmation to the shorts. And your trade will go positive for a little while, then it'll go negative and positive and negative. And it'll never go positive or negative enough for you to let go of that trade. And so you kind of get stuck for a long period of time in a particular trade. Uh, this particular trade, if you got stuck in there, you'd be stuck for weeks in there if you, got, if you allow yourself to get stuck in there. And you're waiting for price to go your direction. And then all of a sudden, It'll break out of that range, okay? It'll break out of that range. And so here, boom, really, really fast, it broke out of the range. And the, what are the longs thinking? Oh, look at that. We, here we go. We're going up because it broke up and it broke out and made a new high. But look what the market makers did. They hit the top zone. And then they, what did they do? They came and took the low zone. And so what this does, this move right here at the top of this wave stopped out all the people that were short. Everybody that was short is like, well, I'm going to put my stop at the last high because if it goes and breaks that high. And so market makers take the free money that's up here because if you're stopping out your short, that means you're buying. They need somebody to sell to. So what do they do? They take price up here fast. A little bit of, they spend a little bit of, bit of money to push price up. And then everybody else is FOMOing in, pushing price up. And then once price gets where they want it, they sell into those stops. Boom. They sell into those buys. Then they take price down. And now the people that are long from up here and in here are freaking out because they're breaking this low. And their stops are hit. And then all of a sudden, wow. <coughs> now the stop for a long is a sell. So you're selling down here. 
<clears throat> at a suboptimal area, stopping your long, and they're buying into your sales. And the market maker is making money hand over fist from the liquidity creating from the chop. That's here. And that's what the market makers do. Guys, let me just tell you that that's what they do to you over and over and over and over and over again. And you have to recognize it. And you have to learn how to trade within that environment. That's what my Discord's for, guys. If you want to learn how to trade in that environment, we, we have strategies that allow us to make money within this chop. Okay? And we have strategies to protect us against it. So we understand what's going on there. And we know, uh, we know how to uh, protect ourselves against it. If you need some help, so you don't lose your money in this kind of chop. Come on into the Discord. Find my link uh, in the lower description there, page, and the Patreon. It's patreon.com slash gym of all trades. You'll see the link down there. Join the Patreon. We'll get you right in. Start teaching you how to trade and protect your assets in this environment. Well, that's your first lesson for market makers, just to get you a little bit of a, just a knowledge about how, how this liquidity works. And you, you'll kind of see it right here in this small time frame, guys. We're, we're in a chop zone. And what do they do today? What did they do today? Well, let's see here. We got we got a we got a box here. We got a liquidity box, right? And and you might even draw a smaller one uh, over the weekend. This is what we had right here, the smaller liquidity zone right here. And what did they do? They set they set a low, they set a high, and they stayed in the middle of it. They broke the low, boom. Broke the high right in here, boom. And now they're staying in the middle of it. <laughs> they come back down to the bottom of the liquidity zone. What do you think they're going to do next? Well, they could break out of the zone for sure. Take this low out. Then come and take that high. They could do that. Or they could break out and continue down. There's any number of things that they can do, right? But the point is that they're going to go where the money is, right? And they're, and they're driving money by price going sideways. And in this zone, because there are people, let, let's just look at it real quick, apply what we just learned. We had kind of a sharp move up, right? There's a bunch of people thinking we got a pullback. Now let's go up some more. There's a bunch of other people saying, ah, we had a nice move up. We need to come all the way back down, right? And probably, guys, price is going to end up coming up here later. And price is going to come down here. So price often goes where you expect it to go, just not in the way you expect it. I teach that all the time, okay? But the market makers are going to are gonna shake you out of your trade first uh, and, um, and, you know, Take, take money from you first before they take price where they're going. So again, if you want to learn how to protect yourself in that environment, would love to have you in there. But that's what's going on right here. So uh, begin to uh, begin to go back and look over the, over the charts and say, okay, how did the market makers take money from people? How did the big boys take money from you in these liquidity zones? All right, guys. Well, I hope that helps you with some perspective. You can go back and draw some liquidity boxes when you have sideways action and say, okay, what's going on? You can do it across all time frames. Hope that helps you guys. We're going to see you on the next video tomorrow, traditional Tuesday. What stocks do you want me to look at tomorrow? I'd love to see that in the comments. Tesla, uh, A AMD, uh, NVIDIA. What do you want to see? Uh, what do you want to see? Uh, we'll definitely do some uh, look at, looking at the uh, S&P. We'll look at the NASDAQ. We'll look at gold and silver as well. We'll just look at the traditional markets on traditional Tuesday. Hope you guys have a fantastic day. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.